And I'm back with more dot hack GU. And that last episode was a whole bunch of balls because there was nothing happening. So I guess they just wanted me to level up a bit. I don't know. Hmm. Oh. Uh, thanks for helping out. You really saved my behind. So, um, about what happened at Raven. I don't think shutting down the server would solve anything. And I know that's part of what Yada is saying is true, but I still don't think that's any reason for us to not do everything we can. I've been thinking about all the things since you saved me, and I'm wondering if I should go back. But I don't think I can with the way things are now. But I'm going to do the best with what I've got. I hope you do the same. I got a message from a player saying they can tell me what happened about Sirius. I'm going to check it out right away. A uh, hidden forbidden battlefield. You're coming along too, right? See you there. The reason for Sirius' odd behavior is Ida. I've got a bad feeling. Are you the one who contacted me? Do you know Sirius? You said you knew the reason why he's acting so strange. What the... Wait a second. You're from Kestrel, aren't you? Try to hang on. What? What is this? My character is fading. No. My consciousness is fading. No. Cade, don't go! I don't want to lose any more friends. Not ever again.
So Okay, it's gone. And yes, just like Shino, she's become a lost one. As you can see, going forward, she'll be blacked out. She's not going to level up, can't access her, she's continually online for the remainder of the game. And I think they knew that Alcade would be a sacrifice. And to me, I, I don't know how everybody else feels, but I felt a gut punch. Because it's not like Alcade was there for that long. But she was a presence in the game long enough, and that she'd actually built some rapport, especially with Haseo, and it's just. No. We're gonna flip the switch, and you're gonna be. You're gonna be gone. You know. And it really sucks because I've said as much, she was my favorite character for a lot of different reasons. And I spent an earlier episode talking about that. And I spent a lot of time with her as a character, building her up and building that rapport. And the storyline said as much. Because I felt more for her in, what, two to three hours of gameplay than I felt for a lot of these characters in ten to twenty. And now, you're just saying, nah. And we know who did it. But it's also tying back to another thing we're going to do, which is finding Endrins. So, there's a reason for it. But... That sure doesn't make me feel any better at all. God damn. Uh, it's almost time for the tournament final. Lord Kaede praised me for remembering some useful information I read in a strategy guide. She even gave me some aerial words. So why don't we go to Ephemeral Times Memoir to level up? You won't find me as the same old Adelie today. I'll back you up like never before, so feel free to fight to your heart's content. P.S. I also sent Alcade an email, but I haven't heard back from her yet. I was hoping to go leveling with the three of us, but do you have any idea what could have happened to Sao? I can't keep this hidden forever. I need to tell Adelie about Alcade. Hmm. Well, that news is gonna suck. invited me to go leveling up well 
Not the best of situations, but at least Coon's available. Man, having to just drop everything after that happened. was like, what? Mm, nah. No. Let's see if I can get any of this stuff. Hello. How are you? Um. Ooh. I want that. Can't get any of those. Alright, level 60. Alright, this is more in line with the area I was expecting. But, uh, yeah. Hmm. I wonder what could have happened to Arcade. Mm. Well. Huh? Did you say something, Haseo? We're supposed to level up, right? Let's complete the mission and get to the Beast Temple. Mm. Alright, so... There's... there's Mecha Grunty. Uh... I'll crush you! Meow! Counter! Ah! Ah! 
Cheap ass. Level I need to be for the next final match. Um, I want to say 72 to 73, but not exactly sure. I am, I am, you know, getting more experience due to that experience booster. So, I say those levels really what matters. Everybody else, I mean, it's important, but it's kind of not in the grand scheme of things, because I say, oh, it's just there. But you also don't want them to die, you know. Yeah, I got him before he exploded. It's just kind of hard. I think that's the point. Is it's not it's not easy transitioning from a moment like that. Oh hey, let's 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 do the gaming thing again. But I I do understand what a game is doing. Yeah. Um. Oh. Okay. So symbol. But it, again, I've said that Dot Hack isn't the best game I've ever played, but its story has its moments. And, you know, your mileage might vary, I think, depending on what characters you this are in fun. into and what you want out of the game, but. I do think it's impressive that you can take a character that didn't really get a whole lot of screen time and still you know and I how many times have I seen that scene I, I can't say for sure like 10 times maybe and I'm still just like yeah it still got to me a little I knew it was coming up soon and I just didn't know I'm kind of glad that I separated episodes and we started off with that because it's it's a bit of catharsis and it's its own episode where I can kind of talk through that because that is a bitch and we know who did it it's Bordeaux they've been alluding to it it didn't come out of nowhere so it's both shocking enough but also it makes sense that Bordeaux would pull that shit and it would make sense that Sakaki would would do that. And 
That's another thing that the game does well, is establish villains. <laughs> because... They certainly built up to Sakaki being a villain, but they were never quite sure. Once the second game started, you just kind of knew, yeah, we're not even hiding it anymore. Which is... Again, is kind of fair. They're... We knew Bordeaux was a bitch. And now we know that Sakaki is working with her. And you just like, yeah, forget it. Forget this shit. Man, what what's the point of this area if there's no enemies on it? Um I got you! And then where is Ovon in all of this? He is helping and yet not helping at the same time. Very cryptic. Uh Sirius and Ida. There's a lot of different I mean, even entrance to a point. You know, an alcade to a point. Becoming enemies for a while, and now you're saying, hey, try to make them allies. But Haseo isn't, you know, perfectly saying, I'm always going to be your friend and I'm going to be a trusted ally. You know, you got to work for it. You know, because we're dealing with Haseo's mindset, too. And we finally turned that corner once the, once the second game started. But, you know, there you have that impact in there. So, again, there's just so much to this game. So many layers. Just like onions. I hate myself for making that reference. It just came to me. I don't know. Um, I haven't seen Shrek in God knows like five years. Then again, I haven't. I haven't needed to. I saw that so many. Fu you see a movie so many fucking times. You don't need to see it again. You could just reference it. Same with video games. Like I don't have to play this game ever again. I'm doing it for content purposes, but man, I love it. But it's like, um, but yeah. Speaking speaking of stuff I hadn't seen for a while. I'm actually re-watching my East 8 playthrough because I was trying to find other games to watch, but I just, like, I was trying to watch stuff like Skies of Arcadia or Wild Arms or Grandia or whatever, and I'm just like, you know, I'm not really into this. Either because the the voice acting in the early, those early days were just not good, or like the uh, early PS2 games and late PS1 games had this weird fascination with always changing the camera every second, every movement, everything. So it would be not motion sickness, but it would be this like weird like. See, look how look how static this camera is. And then I can change it. Or it'd be a fixed camera. Like, I can do that. But think of, like, the opening to every Final Fantasy IX battle. But it happens every time you take an action. That's what, like, watching Wild Arms and stuff was like. So I'm sitting there going, what the fuck? I want to like this game or get into it, but the game is not going to let me. Because I'm not going to sit there and watch 50 million battles of that camera, you know. So, what I ended up doing was starting to rewatch some of my stuff, and I started with East 8, and I was like, I'd say, again, it's been like a few years since since I did that, and it the game still holds a place for me. I think East 8 was like my, my second favorite game of an entire decade. You know, because, to be fair, it was kind of a lean decade last, you know, the 2010s. But you had Persona 5, you had... I guess you had Final Fantasy 15 to an extent. It was okay, but not amazing at all. But, you know, there's other ones, you know, Fire Emblem games, whatever I wasn't into. But a lot of the games that I really liked from that, you know, you started doing re-releases of games like this. You know, but it's 2006 or whatever, so I'm, I'm strictly going, okay, we're back from platformers to 
or were going from platforms like PlayStation Vita and Nintendo 3DS, you had stuff like Bravely Default and whatnot. That's the kind of stuff I was thinking. Radiant Historia. I just thought of that. I'm like, God damn it! Why don't we have Radiant Historia and Bravely Default on modern consoles? You know. But E8 was one of those like, oh my god, I remember loving this, and it still holds up. And I, I don't like try to overuse the I'm rewatching my stuff because I'll try to rewatch an episode just to make sure it sounds okay, you know, or just to make sure I didn't lose anything because I've lost footage on uh, some episodes here and there that forgot to record it or whatever bullshit like that, but. I don't play games to replay them anymore because I have them as content. It's a weird thing. And that's kind of how I feel with East 8 was I've played it three or four times pretty much to completion. And now that I have access to it, you know, it's not to drive up my own numbers. I don't know if YouTube adds numbers to any time that, like, if you watch your own stuff back. But even just watching it backwards to forwards or just catching the, the main plot points, I'm like, there was a lot to like in that game. And I'm, I'm curious if this is going to be the same deal with this, too. I'm imagining the same idea. It's like, a year goes by, and I'm looking for stuff to do, and I don't have another game that I'm looking up for purposes like this, or I'm not playing a certain game, and I'm like, uh, what was my playthrough like? I remember that when I first played Final Fantasy VII, not with, not with Lee, but like when I first did recordings, and I was ugh, I had just no confidence. But even with East Eight, though that was years ago, and I was still on camera at the time, it was kind of weird. But I still think it kind of holds up. But it's more, I I don't know. I'll crush you. I don't think of myself three years ago as all that different from now. Looking back on it. Because I'd already have a few years experience. And that's something I do hear a lot of or see a lot of is like, how do you speak? How do you act? How do you whatever on a YouTube clip or a stream like, you just do. You practice it and whether it works for you or doesn't, you make good with who you are as a personality. And I'm not saying my personality is the best, and I've maintained that, and especially in this playthrough, like, you'll notice there are times where I don't talk. Where I just stay away from talking. Because I'm trying to get through another of these areas, and I don't really have a dungeon thing. What I've, what I've, I remember Nakatilili calling calling them dungeon rants because that's how you get through them. I do that with Persona a lot. Is using dungeon rants, but if the game hasn't given me something like the Alcade thing or the upcoming Endurance thing, like there's not much to talk about. So I'll let the game play itself out. I still think it's more about the game than me, and I've always kind of said that. I like myself, and I like how I sound to an extent, but I also like letting the game breathe, and if the game is good, I think then it, it's incumbent on me to express that, but also pick my spots and say, alright, when do I let the game just do it? Because I know I'm supposed to be available as a presence. But I don't have to be active all the time. Sometimes just let the game do the talking. And that's something that comes with time, comes with experience, and comes with a general understanding of, well, if I'm doing voice acting for a game, then that's one thing. But a game like this where there is a lot of voice acting, there's just an agreement in my head where it's like, nah, I ain't gotta talk much. I can let the game do it for me. And then fill in the gaps and fill in the spaces after that. East was kind of the same vibe. Haseo, we did it! All that's left to do is to get the Beast Temple's treasure. Right. This is a little trail off her hand. 
Did, uh, did something happen? You seem kind of off today. <sighs> Alcade retired. Retired? Wait a minute. You mean she quit the game? No. <laughs> Damn. More Ida. Adelie, stand back. All right. <laughs> You're ruining the mood. was also attacked by Ida? I couldn't save her either. Haseo. It's the same as with Shino. It's all my fault. It's all because I had my epitaph stolen. Ida's the one who got Alcade. Your epitaph had nothing to do with it. But Master Yada said... He said that the Ida server might have come about because of Ida's increased activity after taking my epitaph. In that case, it really is my... That's just Yada's guess. Don't worry about it. But Haseo... Sirius changed because he became infected by Ida, too! You see, if Sirius hadn't been infected by Ida, then Alcade would still be all right. Natalie, don't make everything your fault. <laughs> if you say things like that, then all this becomes my responsibility for not being able to solve anything. Sell some of our crap, I guess. Come on, load up.
Alright, haven't been back to Death Grunty for a while. So. Seems like run a little bit long. Nothing they can't handle, I suppose. you guys next time.